hi guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new video with me if you're new here my name is Mima Prince and I am glad you're here okay so today I'm going to be taking you guys on a journey yeah this is kind of new and strange but I'm gonna do it yeah we are gonna do it okay so please just pardon the setup of my background and any noise you might be hearing or not i just gathered the strength to make this video yeah i had to gather the strength to make this video because currently we are heavy okay yeah we are heavy yeah i know you can see my bone very well but yeah we are heavy so um yeah i'm going to be starting this video this way so i'm going to be taking you through my pregnancy journey from the day one i found out that i was pregnant guys i'm pregnant till date okay so i'm just going to be telling you the things that i've been experiencing and the changes and everything that comes with pregnancy that no one actually tells you okay so let's just get right into this video so i have most of the things i went through written down in case you see me looking down i have them written down because yeah we do have pregnancy brain and you can't come or memorize everything you went through and stuff and also i have some videos to explain in details what i was going through as at a particular time so i'm going to be starting from my first trimester my first trimester was a mess so i didn't have any video for my first trimester it was really really chaotic i was sick i was very very sick i felt like i was going to die yeah it was that terrible it was that bad I felt like I was going to die because the sickness was terrible. I couldn't go out for three months. I was indoors. I was in my house for three good months. Yeah, so um, when I found out I was pregnant, I was emotionally downcast. <sighs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I was really emotionally downcast. I was feeling some type of way i felt i felt different emotions running through me i was not happy at the same time i was happy so it was i was just all over the place like my emotions were we were all over the place i was overly excited though and at the same time i was scared i was like i'm not ready i'm not ready for this the pregnancy is unplanned i love to plan my life i am one that jonah thinks a lot so i love to plan my life i love to plan how much i'll i'll you know keep or save for a particular thing and this came unplanned it just came so i was really really all over the place with my emotions then firstly the cravings started kicking in yeah in my first trimester the cravings started kicking in even when i was sick in my sick state i was overly hungry and the inspiration of food kicks in in the middle of the night when everyone is sleeping that's where i was not having inspiration of oh i would like to eat this and this together oh i would love this oh i would love this so sometimes i put them down or mostly i wake my husband up from sleep and i tell him I want to eat this and you're like in the morning now go back to sleep in the morning so the most times for for i not to forget i put them down and when it's morning i tell him this is what i want to eat and he wasn't cooking because he works so he orders the food for me so i ate a lot in my first trimester i was really really eating i was eating good food yeah i was eating good food so yeah in my first dream i started that was when i started growing bigger boobs like my boobs were gigantic 
it was as though I grew new set of boobs to the extent that I was using my hands to support myself because it felt like my chest was gonna explode like <laughs> it's just what it is and I was extremely tired I was extremely fatigued I was so super tired on top of the sickness I was always tired Did not do anything in the house I was just like vegetable just always lying down always you know I was just in a sick mood yeah so my leg pain started in my first trimester yeah my legs started aching my first trimester it was that terrible it was that bad my pelvic area was paining me like it was intense so people started telling me like those that knew i was pregnant close family friends though they started telling me oh it's because you lay down too much you don't walk around the house and mind you it's just my first trimester my stomach is still very very flat like extremely flat nobody knows i'm pregnant there is nothing there as far as i'm concerned so they were telling me oh take a walk most of the evenings try to work try to work you know you'll be fine and if you take those work your health will start going back to normal and all that stuff so in the evenings my husband i and my husband will walk around my compound because then i was leaving i was leaving somewhere else now i'm leaving somewhere else like don't mind me so that compound that i was living in was extremely big so i'll take works in the evening for like an hour and when i come back i'll feel so much better and i'll be like wow it works like magic so yeah so guys like i said earlier on pardon any noise you might have been hearing change of setup change of lightings and all that just pardon it ignore it okay just ignore all of it so like i was saying so yeah still on my first trimester i i was having difficulty in going to the restroom yeah to do number two I was having lots of difficulty i would cry my stomach will I, I always have constipation but yet i cannot do number two i'll sit in the toilet i'll force myself so hard and i will cry and i will pray for it to just come out and believe me it was that bad i do hear people do it easily when you're pregnant but mine my first trimester was hell but right now i'm in my third trimester and trust me it's way easy like it's easy i feel like a factory of that stuff right now because i can do it three times a day which is very weird to me because before i got pregnant i even hardly do that i do that maybe once in once in two days or stuff like that don't mind me so yeah it was really difficult so my nausea started from my sixth week of pregnancy i started vomiting i started chewing up and it was that bad i had money sickness bad money sickness every morning i always chew up especially when i won't brush my teeth it was that terrible it was that bad i couldn't brush my teeth successfully I'll always chew up so in the mornings I already know that oh I'm going to chew up so I don't eat anything because I already timed myself I already knew oh from from 7 to the hours of 10 I'll train up so I would not eat anything before I started timing myself I would eat and eat and chew up and chew up everything i wouldn't chew up my medications so i literally had to time myself so i knew that from the hours of eight to ten i'll be training up so i will try not to eat anything the only thing i would take is water liquid i'll just take liquid stuff that i know i can let go easily because it felt like as though i was wasting my food i was wasting the food and i wasn't cooking them it was being bought and food is expensive cook food 
good cooked food is very expensive here in Lagos, so I will take just liquid and I'll chop. I'll chop a lot. I chew up for three months, I think. Oh, um, yeah, I chew up. The whole of my first trimester, I was literally trained up everywhere. Anyway, just being sick, you know. And also, I was in malaria mood. Like, when I say malaria mood, from my fourth week of pregnancy to my eighth week of pregnancy, I was sick. Always in malaria mood. You know that malaria mood where you feel like, oh, your body, your body is just, you know, I don't know how to explain it. When you guys know malaria mood, I was just in malaria mood. Basically, like I said, I was terribly sick. I was really, really very ill. So, another thing that happened was if the food you give to me was not inspired by my cravings, sorry, I would not eat it. Even if you tell me, oh, this food is going to give you blood, oh, this food is going to make you strong, oh, this food is going to do this, going to do that. As far as I'm coming from my inspiration, I would not eat it because... So, it's not, it's not going to taste good to my taste buds. It's not going to taste good. It's not going to taste yummy. I'm not going to enjoy it. And I like to enjoy my food. So I wasn't eating anything outside my craving inspiration. <laughs> then here, this, this particular thing I want to say. Hmm. I want to ask, is it a norm for pregnant women in their first trimester, maybe first and second trimester? Is it norm to crave cold water? Because... Mine was out of this world. I couldn't bear the sight of ordinary water. I just couldn't. You give me ordinary water, you want me to fight you. And you want me to draw up on you. I couldn't bear the sight of ordinary water. Cold water was my go-to. It was suiting whatsoever that was going down there. It was just suiting my life. It was suiting my entire life. So people will come up to me, or my mom will come up to me and say, Oh, cold water is not good. It's gonna do this, it's gonna do that, it's gonna do this, it's gonna do that. But <laughs> I drank cold water all through my first and second trimester. It was really good. It was good. It was my go to for drinking cold things. I loved cold things. I'm sorry. Even if it's wrong, I'm sorry, but I did it. Yeah. So, also, I was always irritated. Like, I don't want to see death around me. I was always irritated. I always tell my husband, please clean this place. I don't want I don't want to see death. And things were just smelling all over me. To the extent that I don't allow my husband to spray his perfume around me. And yeah, I did my research and I found out that babies don't like strong scents. So it wasn't it was coming through me because I hated the smell of perfume. I hated the smell of onion. In short, I hated the smell of kitchen. Once I go into the kitchen, I get irritated. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I could even smell people's soul. If someone was cooking far away from my building, I would smell it and tell my husband, that person is cooking beans. That person is cooking jello fries. That person is cooking fries. And I'm like, how do you know? And I'm like, I can smell your soul, nigga. <laughs> I could smell. I could smell deeply. And if you come around me and you're putting on the, a kind of scent I don't like, do you know what I was always doing to take that scent off? It was super weird. Now I think about it, I felt I feel like I was crazy then. For real, I just feel like I was crazy because guess what I was doing? I'll wrap paper. I'll tear a piece of paper and wrap it. And make it like a long stick and I'll burn it like an incense and I'll use the smoke to you know hover around me, hover around where I'm sitting because I don't want to smell anything. Don't bring smells, don't bring perfumes, don't bring don't bring things to me. I don't want to smell. It was that bad. It was that bad, it was that terrible. I even got tired of myself doing that. I got tired, but you know, we overcame it. Yeah. You know, anytime I complain to my mom, she always like, oh, don't worry, you overcome it. You overcome it. And truly, yeah, I overcame it. <laughs> so yeah, in my first trimester, I was extremely cold. 
do you know i forgot about this i forgot about this and thank god i i wrote it down in my first trimester i was extremely cold why because right now i'm extremely hot i don't know if you can hear the fan the ac is on and the fan is on at the same time that's how hot i am in my third trimester but in my first you see my first trimester i was extremely cold i don't want to you know i didn't want ac i didn't want fans i was always wrapped up with clothes what a life <laughs> I, I feel like i i had all the same terms in life because most women don't even have all the same terms they just like pick one or two or three but you see me i picked every everything all the symptoms about pregnancy was dumped on my head what a life so yeah i said this earlier on i was always bloated i i, I always had constipation my food wasn't digesting very well it continued like this till the eight weeks eight week of my pregnancy so yeah i was always bloated always had constipation but yeah we overcame that one too we stopped my eight weeks so yeah coming to how it all started i had this unshakable headache when i say unshakable this headache was unmovable like it wasn't going anywhere headache that doesn't go anywhere even even when treated even when taking when you take medication and all that stuff even when you sleep you still wake up with that headache so i had terrible migraine and that was how i knew i was pregnant i had this terrible migraine for weeks i think i knew i was pregnant in my sixth week of pregnancy i was six weeks pregnant when they confirmed that yeah you're pregnant so i think from the day one to the sixth week of that pregnancy i had this headache that wasn't going anywhere I felt like I was sick. I felt like something was wrong with my brain. I started getting scared. I was like, do I have a tumor in my brain? God forbid. Like, I was just thinking out of this world. I was thinking weirdly. I went to this hospital at first. And the doctor was... I went to the hospital close to my house. It's called First City Hospital. Yeah, I love to give reviews about things. Bad or good. Because I don't want people to fall victim. So I went to this hospital. I frequent the hospital for like two weeks. The doctor, at first, the doctor was like, Oh, take paracetamol, take this drug. Maybe you have malaria, take typhoid, take whatever, whatever, whatever. I took this drug. Not knowing that I was pregnant. But they said I had malaria, I had this, I had that. They ran tests and told me I had malaria. So I said, Okay, well, I finished the drugs. The malaria was not going. I went back to the hospital. I told the doctor, I've not seen my period for a very long time. Can we please do a pregnancy test? He was like, oh, ask me some questions. I was like, oh, no, you're not pregnant. It's not pregnancy. You're not pregnant. I said, can we do a test? He said, no, that he knows I'm not pregnant. Um, I should, he prescribed some drugs. I should go buy these drugs. I got really pissed. I was like, what are these people doing? I told you I've not seen my period. And I told you I have this unmovable headache. Let's, you know, I worked in the lab, I worked in the hospital before, so let's check for pregnancy first before you go on to prescribe more drugs, more medications. And he was doing otherwise. And me, being who I am and where I've worked before, I know that he's behaving quack. Like, it's not right. The nurses, they gave me bad vibes and all that stuff. That hospital is no go area it's not good like they're going to kill you because oh it was terrible they were telling me to go do blood sugar blood. they just tell him different things other than getting the pregnancy test so i was like okay and i even take, took my mind off it i took my mind off it i felt like okay maybe i'm forcing myself to be pregnant so i'm not pregnant so i just took my mind off it and i was living normal trying to take my paracetamol every day just to keep this headache in check i was always trying to lie down trying to you know relax myself i wasn't going anywhere on see one day i just told myself i need to do this test myself i'm not waiting for nobody i just need to do this test because my period is not forthcoming you know 
So that was how your baby get near. She was pregnant. And I went to another hospital and got my pregnancy test done and they confirmed that I was pregnant. So yeah, I had this migraine from my fourth, I think from the fourth week to seventh week of my pregnancy. The migraine was unmovable, unshakable. It was that terrible. I prayed to God, I did everything, but yeah. It didn't go to my seventh week of pregnancy and it left on its own. And I became free. Like I was like, God, thank you. I am free of this headache. Do you know what headache is? Do you really know what headache is? It's terrible. So I was always drinking water. My husband started calling me GP Tank because we we do bottle waters in my home. In less than two days, two parts of bottle water is finished. <laughs> Who drank them? me i was drinking like a fish well i was always thirsty so what to do i need to drink water and yeah i hated social media i hated social media so very much i disappeared from social media for three good months i was nowhere to be found people were asking where are you how you doing hope you're fine i'll be like yeah i'm just here on the low key i just don't want to go out i don't want to do anything and i was pregnant all those times i was pregnant and i was going through it i was going through the hell of pregnancy first trimester so i hated social media even when i tried my best i tried my best like i want to see what's going on in the world of social media but end up i pick up my phone i end up not even going there why i was always doing i was always seeing movies netflix became my best friend i saw movies for three straight months seasonal movies you know, I watched the best movies in my first trimester. Then also, I had rashes all over my body. It was that bad. I had bad rashes. But it left. It left after some time. So yeah, that, those are the things that happened in my first trimester that I couldn't record. I couldn't you know, show any of that because, like I said, I hated social media. I hated my camera. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to relax and just get myself again i was praying to be normal again because as at that point i wasn't normal i wasn't myself i felt like i'm not normal i felt like an alien was growing inside of me like a foreign body something that's not meant to be there do you get so my second trimester i had grew everything and yeah i started filming so yeah the clips you're going to be seeing from now on are uh, the clips that i made i think first trimester and third trimester so i didn't film all of my third trimester because presently i'm still in my third trimester so when you're done watching this clip i'll come back and tell you what is going on with me presently okay hi guys i'm laughing because i've recorded this I recorded what I want to say and I recorded like 20 times <laughs> that's because this is my first time of filming or like carrying my camera to film after four months of disappearing so this is my second trimester of pregnancy I'm just going to be showing you guys what I really look like like what I really look like I look terrible trust me most of the times I don't even put on clothes because of the heat so intense like if the AC is not on I'm not on clothes I will not put on clothes so my hair has been like this for like four months yeah this is my hair I've not been taking care of it I've not done anything to my hair just staying like that no bonnet no nothing i just sleep like that because my first trimester was terrible you guys saw that previously so today for the first time in four months i'll try and wash my hair because i'll be stepping out for the first time in four months tomorrow i've been stepping out but i've been going to the hospital but this outing i'm going it's not the hospital so like this is my first kind of outing you get so i need to wash my hair i can't carry this kind of 
dandruff. If I scratch my hair like this, Garuda will be falling. Ah. So, um, second trimester. Okay, my face is dark. My body is glowing. I've not applied cream for four months because I hate the smell of cream. My body is glowing. Fair as ever. Skin like milk. Like, my skin is like milk. I don't know if I can show you guys. My skin is flawless but my face you see my face my face is not cooperating my face is not part of this pregnancy glow at all my face is so dark hyperpigmentation is increasing the pimples the rashes everything is increasing when it comes to my neck and my face well since the second trimester and i've started getting used to the smell of cream i'll try and treat my face because a baby girl has to humble this pregnancy like i cannot be looking like a mad person all the time do you get so well what else what else what else what else so for today i'm just going to be washing my hair and that is it no stress no stress on myself as time goes on i'll keep updating you guys yeah so i'm losing my hair and it turns out to be that my hair locked locked and became like dread okay i'm going to show you how it looks like first off look at the dirt falling off my hair so much just imagine I had gone to the salon. Hmm. It would have insulted me and said I'm a dirty girl. So, you see the root of my hair is locked. It is locked like. Ah. Okay, this one is even coming off. The Gary that is in, on this hair. See, see Gary. Hey, <laughs> God. See. hey how did i land here just four months four months four months of not washing my hair four months this is it chronicles of a pregnant me so still on my second trimester updates well i have the strength to do practically anything i want to do in the house right now my first trimester i was so lazy i couldn't do anything i was sick my husband was the one doing everything like every single thing in the house washing clothes washing plates cooking buying food for me if he cannot cook and all those stuff but now i can do all that but it's just that if i do any little thing like this i will be beating as though i ran to the stadium and run back to my house to get so so as you can see i finally made my hair i did it in two days which is abnormal because if i if i was having my full strength i'll do my hair just one day it's just that i wasn't having my strength that day i got tired i just moved it to the next day and i did it the whole of the next day so Anyway, I just had to do my hair so that I can start wearing wigs because I've not been going out for the past four months. I've not been going out, so I want to start going out my normal activities and all that stuff. So, um, okay, another update is that um, I drink water like a camel. I I drink water like no play with me. I did drink water. I drink water a lot like this this bottle of water and I'm, I'm going to finish it that's how bad it is i finish a bottle of water at a drink so i drink water a lot and i don't drink ordinary water it must be like this it must be as cold as this not block but it's just be cold if i drink ordinary water i'm going to drop So I drink water a lot. Then something else I noticed is 
I breathe heavily. My heart beats faster than it should be beating. My doctor said it's normal. And it makes me breathe like if I just do something like this now. <sighs> I breathe a lot and I am breaking out seriously. Yeah, I'm breaking out seriously. Like, it's so serious. Tiny pimples, though, not giant ones. Maybe the only giant one I have is this one that you can see. Tiny pimples all over my forehead, my side, beard, my hair, under hair. I'm breaking out seriously. And trust me, in first trimester, it was worse. My face was a mess. My face was way darker than my body. Even with the fact that I wasn't applying any cream because cream smells in my nose, perfume, those things. I don't want to even see them. I just have my shower and come out of the bathroom. So my body is flawless. Pregnancy glow, I think. But my face, I'm trying to get my face to match my body. So now I'm out of a I've overcame the smell of cream and all that stuff, so I'm beginning to apply cream on my face and trying to treat my pimples and hyperpigmentation and get my face to be the same shade of color on my body. So, yeah, that's the update. That's what I've been going on. So, I think that's the update for now. Nothing much. I'm just normal. I'm strong again. I can dance, I can do exercise, I can do anything, I'm strong. It's just that when I finish doing them, I start breathing and I get so tired easily. I get very tired and in the night I pass out till money. So yeah, we're going to... I'm just in my second trimester. I don't need to tell you what month I am right now, but I'm in my second trimester. Just know that, okay? So, see ya when I see ya. Bye.